So how's it going everyone? Welcome back to another Battlefield 2042 video. Now for today's video, I'm going to be doing another tips and tricks video. A lot of you guys really enjoyed my first one, so I figured I would make a second one. So if you guys haven't seen my first tips and tricks video, be sure to check it out as well. So the first tip I have for you guys is as of right now, as of recording this video on November 22nd, the single player progression has been turned on again. So you can go ahead and farm all your attachments for your weapons and your vehicles. Now, if you play single player, you can't farm levels so you can't get yourself from level 1 all the way up to level 100 but you can level up all your weapon attachments for pretty much all your weapons and vehicles I recommend pretty much everyone do this even if you don't have very much fun playing with the bots I still recommend you do it just because it's way faster to get all the best attachments doing it this way versus playing online so if you're at the main menu just select the game modes and then at the top you can switch between multiplayer or solo and co-op just pick solo and co-op and then under settings you can change the difficulty of the AI soldiers you can make it beginner intermediate or advanced I just put it on beginner because it's the easiest and then you can choose your favorite map like I said this is just a great way to farm different weapon attachments Attachments. I got all these different attachments from just one match of farming these bots. I like to go in with weapons that I don't normally use in multiplayer. Weapons that I just don't really have any desire in using in multiplayer because they don't feel too good to use. So I've been leveling up all these other weapons just in case DICE decides to change some of the weapon balancing. Maybe some of these weapons might be better in the future. So for example, I was leveling up some of my shotguns and stuff. I don't use shotguns in multiplayer, but I figured if I do for some reason ever want to use a shotgun, I'll just go ahead and have all these attachments. Now DICE didn't announce that they were turning this back on, it's just something that I kind of stumbled across. So the next tip I have for you guys has to do with the anti-armor rounds or the armor piercing rounds or whatever you want to call them. So in this video I'll be using the NTW-50 sniper rifle with the high power attachment. These rounds do more damage against vehicles and stuff and as you can see here in comparison the normal rounds take a lot to destroy a vehicle but as soon as you put on the high power rounds from what I found it normally takes four to five shots to take out pretty much any vehicle in the game. And what's scary is that this is actually better than the recoilless M5 when it comes to destroying certain vehicles. So for example, the sniper rifle does a much better job at taking out tanks compared to the recoilless M5. Now the recoilless M5 rocket launcher will still take out air vehicles with one hit, but when it comes to some of these ground vehicles, sometimes it can take three or more shots to take out a ground vehicle. And honestly, I think that needs a buff. So if you're playing as a higher level and you finally reach level 60 and you unlock that NTW-50 sniper rifle and you don't want to run around carrying a rocket launcher, I recommend you guys just carry the sniper rifle. And then if you come across the tank, I would switch to those anti-material rounds, pop it four or five times. That'll save you a equipment slot. That way you don't have to spend your equipment on a rocket launcher when you don't necessarily need it. And I've been doing this for a while now it's pretty handy I think that they probably need to do some fine-tuning with this I don't think the sniper rifle should do more damage than the rocket launcher but as of right now that's how it is so definitely check out those high material anti-armor rounds so the next tip that I have for you guys has to do with the Rangers now in the beta there was no Ranger controls at all now for the longest time I was trying to figure out how to control the Rangers and I basically just accepted that there was no Ranger controls because it never really tells you and it's sort of hidden behind all of the horrible user interface in this game it's just super confusing they don't do a good job of telling you how to control this thing and it's hidden in the command menu like when you bring up your little command menu to try to talk to teammates it's actually hidden in that menu which is kind of wonky and it kind of limits your field of view but you can actually control the ranger it doesn't have to just follow you aimlessly which is actually really handy now I stumbled across this by complete accident I thought these rangers kind of just suck but the fact that you can actually tell them where to go is a game changer for for me a lot of people don't realize that you can do this but you can tell the ranger to just go into the fight for you you could be hiding behind cover I've seen a lot less rangers on the battlefield as the game progressed because as people play the game people realize that the rangers just kind of suck and I think it's because they don't realize that you can tell them where to go so since I discovered this I take cover all the time I like to combine them with Boris I'll have the Boris sentry gun sitting beside me and then I'll have the ranger go out and distract enemies that way I sort of have two sentry guns the turret and the ranger but what you do is you bring up your comms menu and then at the bottom of the screen it will tell you to hit one button to tell it where to go or two buttons to follow you or you can hold in a button to self-destruct so on xbox it's x on playstation it's probably square i'm not too sure what it is on pc but like i said this is a game changer it does act a little wonky and glitchy like everything in this game <laughs> 
Like sometimes I'll double tap the X button to tell him to follow me and he just won't listen. But when it does decide to work, this is so handy. I've used this thing to flank enemies numerous times. I've told it to go into the battle and take out like vehicles and stuff. It's just really, really handy. And trust me, once you figure out how to control the Rangers, they're way better than you ever thought that they were. So highly, highly recommend you guys take advantage of these Ranger controls. So up next on the list has to do with leveling up. Now I made an entire video based on this, but this is for those of you that didn't watch that video. Now if you guys want to level up the quickest, that way you guys get access to all the different weapons in the game. The fastest way that you can grind XP is by picking Casper, the recon specialist. You can use his recon drone to constantly scan enemies like I'm doing in this footage here. I'm just hiding and flying his drone around and I'm just constantly pinging everyone with the drone. And then if you combine the drone with the proc sensor grenades, the proc sensor grenades will scan anyone in the area and every single time it scans an enemy it will give you 5 XP and if any of your teammates kill any of the scanned enemies it will give you 50 XP. So this actually gives you more XP than if you were just going around getting kills. Getting assists in this game for some reason is worth more XP. So instead of going around grinding 100 kills, if you got 100 assists it would actually be worth more XP. So if you guys want to level up really quickly this is what I did. I went from like level 40 to level 60 in no time doing this method. Just go around constantly helping your teammates, scanning enemies with the drone, scanning enemies with the grenades, getting all those assist points, getting those assist ribbons, and that's by far the fastest way to level up. And since we're on the subject of drones, some of you guys know that you can put C5 on the drone and fly it around and blow things up. But what some of you probably didn't know is that you can put the healing crates on top of the drones as well. So if you guys want to play as a recon medic, you now have the option to do that. This is actually pretty fun. It's a unique twist on the medic role. Instead of running into the action and trying to revive everybody, or running into the action and putting yourself in danger to try to heal your teammates, you can now safely put this med kit on the drone and fly it around round towards your teammates in the middle of the action, give them some health on the go, you get some XP from doing this, you help your team from doing this, and it's just really fun to do. So if you didn't know that you could heal your teammates with the drone, now you do. So the next tip I have for everyone is changing your rate of fire. Now a lot of people don't even realize that you can do this. Someone asked me on stream how to change this because it's not too easy to find. Like I said, this game's user interface is really wonky and just not very good. So to change your rate of fire, you actually have to zoom in with your weapon and then hit down on the D-pad. You can change your rate of fire depending on the weapon. Some weapons go full auto, some have a three round burst, some just fire single shot and this will help you control your accuracy. Now weapons in this game aren't very accurate. They have a horrible weapon bloom and you know sometimes it's just hard to hit your shots. So I'm constantly taking advantage of this. If I'm using a close range weapon, I like to change my rate of fire to just single shot and then for each trigger pull it fires one shot. So that definitely helps me control my aim and my accuracy at mid range with those close range weapons. Now I think they should change this. I don't like aiming down sight to change the rate of fire. I think that's pretty stupid and it's definitely kind of hidden. A lot of people don't realize this because while you're aiming you're not really looking at your HUD. You're kind of focused on who you're aiming at. So I think that's why it sort of sneaks by a lot of people. So the next tip I have has to do with those proc sensors. So if you see these proc sensor grenades, you can actually interact with them and you can kick them. This is pretty handy in certain situations. Say you throw a proc sensor and you're pinging and then the enemy falls back uh, or you kill all the enemies in the area. And instead of like looking for new proc sensors or an ammo crate, you can actually interact with these proc sensors and kick them. So this has come in handy a couple times for me. If I'm in the middle of a fight and I kill the enemies, I'll just kick the proc sensor a little bit further and I'll get a couple extra pings from that. I don't know if you can kick enemy proc sensors. I've not really come across any enemy proc sensors to test it out, but it's worth a shot. So if you guys test it out, let me know down in the comments if you can kick them away or not. And then the next tip has to do with the loadouts. If you guys see these loadout crates just spawned all the time from Angel, a lot of people ignore these crates because a lot of people don't want to change their loadouts mid-match. Everyone in this game is sort of carrying around whatever weapon you want. There's no class system, so there's not really any point in changing your loadouts. I've never once thought to change my loadout during a match, so I've always ignored these crates. And a lot of people don't realize that if you want to fill up your ammo, you don't just walk near the crate, you actually have to go into the crate and then back out. So these loadout crates don't work the same way as an ammo crate. Normally at an ammo crate, you would just walk over an ammo crate and it would just refill your ammo. You have to make sure if you want to refill all your gadgets and ammo, you have to interact with the crate and back out. That's the only way that you can get ammo from these crates. 
So you may not want to change your loadout when you see these, but if you do want ammo, just make sure to interact with it. So then the final tip I have for you guys is for those of you that play on console. If you guys are playing on console and you're just playing casually and you're not playing with any friends on PC, I highly, 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 highly recommend you guys go and turn off crossplay. And trust me, it is going to make a world of difference. Now it's set up really poorly on Xbox, PlayStation, you just go and you hit the button. But on Xbox, you actually have to go to your user settings, which I'll show you how to do now. You have to go to account, then you have to go to privacy and online safety. Then you have to type in whatever your pass key is if you have one. Then you go to Xbox privacy, you go down to view details and customize. And then you go clear down to communication and multiplayer and then you go to the second tab you can join cross network play and go and hit block now i think it's really stupid that xbox players have to do this and a lot of people don't realize that you have to do this and a lot of people don't realize that they're even playing by default with pc players and trust me, as soon as I turned this off, my gameplay experience was so much better. When I've been playing in these PC lobbies, I get spawn killed so often from snipers. From what I've noticed with PC players, PC players for some reason gravitate towards sniper rifles and marksman rifles because they're just so accurate with a keyboard and mouse. And for some reason, there's not much aim assist on console. And as soon as I turned that off and I started to play with other Xbox players, my experience was just so much better. I wasn't getting spawn killed nearly as often. It felt like all the gunfights were fair. I wasn't instantly dying anytime an enemy saw me. Trust me, if you guys want to have a lot more fun while on console, just turn off crossplay and then report back to me just how much of a difference it made. Trust me, it is night and day difference. It is way, way, way more fun and way more fair. But that is going to do it for these tips and tricks. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section down below. If you guys are new here, hit that subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications. That way you guys don't miss out on any future videos. Be sure to follow me on Twitch at Swanee Plays Games Live, and I will talk to you all in the next video.